hello guys today i am going to talk about a topic which is very useful for most of the civil engineer and even for a structural engineer when it comes to the modeling of slab in SAP and ETFs uh, most of the civil engineer and structural engineers has to choose one of the cell which are listed in uh, SAP and ETFs right because modeling of slab uh, is very useful in most of the civil engineering uh, structures like building structure shear wall uh, hydropower projects and irrigation projects right then what we should know before we choose the cell membrane or layered element from the ETFs first we should understand how the cell element behaves when it faces the, an external load when we apply the external load in a structure it maintains its equilibrium through its deformation right we apply the load and then the load will convert it into the internal forces in the member and then internal forces adjusted its deformation to maintain its equilibrium the total deformation is the deformation produced by bending deformation that is given by wl by 48 ei for a simply supported beam and wei by uh, wl by ae for axial deformation and kwl by ga for shear deformation that's how the equilibrium maintains in a cell element right then we should understand what is axial deformation how the axial deformation uh, can be obtained uh, in a cell element the deformation that occurs in a body due to axial loading is known as axial deformation axial deformation uh, calculation can be done by fl by a where a is the cross sectional area and l is the length of the member if we apply an external p kilo newton load on a membrane structure membrane element then the p forces converted into the axial forces f and it maintains its deformation because it has the axial rigidity ea the another deformation uh, is the bending deformation we all know when we studied flexor uh, in strength of material how the bending deformation is calculated and what is the governing equation for the bending deformation the governing equation for the bending deformation is m by i and sigma by y e by r which we already studied the calculation for bending deformation or deflection for a simply supported uh, beam is wlq by 48 i it is a change in configuration of the elastic line due to bending the bending deformation includes rotation and displacement of the elastic line right that is the bending deformation and that's how we calculated the bending deformation we studied axial deformation bending deformation and now we go to the shear deformation what is shear deformation then the shear deformation is the angular change in radian at each corner angular change in radian at each corner of the cell element the deformation by which a small rectangle is changed into the parallelogram at first it was a rectangle it is the thickness of the uh, cell that is l and after the application of the external force it just changed into the parallelogram right the angular change in radian that is gamma equal to delta x by l which is shown in the figure then shear deformation is calculated by using the formula wl by ga gab what is ab ab is the shear area shear area is the effective area of the section participating in the shear deformation for a structure involving members having low effective span to member depth ratio it means when a cell element has 
greater thickness, then shear deformation could be responsible for as high as 20% of the total drift. It means shear deformation can contribute um, around 20% of the total deformation because total deformation is the deformation produced by bending axial and shear. For shear deformation, WL by GAB, yeah, we have written the formula here, but when we go to uh, this equation, KWL by GA, here K equal to gross area by shear area. The shear area it is the shear area is the function of uh, no, a total area is the function of shear area then k equal to a by a b now uh, here are the two curves when contribution of uh, contribution to uh, total deformation by shear and bending deformation. L by D is the ratio. L is the length of span of the element. Then D is the thickness of the element. If the thickness uh, span to thickness ratio decreases, that means if thickness of the element increase, uh, then the contribution of shear deformation will be high. In the same time, the flexural deformation will be low. It means if we increase the thickness, then shear deformation has to be accounted. And here, uh, in a simple stress, the shear stress is assumed to be constant throughout the section. But if we assume the shear deformation, then the stress variation is shown like that, right? Uh, zero, at, it is minimum at the center and maximum at the two ends of a uh, section of an element. Now, uh, we just need to focus to the options available in uh, ETAPS. The first option available in ETAPS is the membrane. Among four, membrane, what among four, what is the membrane? We need to understand. Membrane are the plates with zero or negligible flexural, stress, flexural stiffness. It means it cannot bear out of plane bending because it has uh, no flexural stiffness. The membrane element is used to represent only in plane stiffnesses. If it has in, in plane stiffnesses, it possesses an in plane rigidity that is axial rigidity that is EA, which enable to carry axial forces. If we apply an external load to the membrane element, then this membrane object transfer all, on, all or 100% load directly to the supporting structural object because it does not possess any type of bending stiffness. If we take the example of the membrane, uh, we can take the bed sheet on your room. When we apply external load on your bed sheet, then it just bends without any resistance, right? But it creates internal forces in axial direction. So, if we need uh, only axial resistance in our uh, structural uh, elements, then we can choose uh, membrane type of structure. But if we need to resist bending, then we need to go to the other options, right? Other option is thin cell. The thin cell was idealized by the Christoph Law theory. It has defined in two coordinate systems. One is angular coordinate system and another is planar coordinate system. In a angular coordinate system, a cylinder is considered to be thin if the ratio of the inner diameter to the thickness of the wall is greater than 20. It means d by t is greater than 20. If we apply the internal process P on a 
wall of the cylinder then it it generates whoop stress and uh, radial stresses but the whoop stress and radial stresses value is single um, because the thin cell element does not consider the variation of both whoop and radial stresses in angular system it means across the thickness it just gives um, one value uh, and does not give the variation across the thickness uh, for whoop stress and radial stress in planar coordinate system if the ratio of the effect relevant to thickness is less than around 4 if it if the effective span to thickness of the element is uh, less than four, uh, less than 4 then this then it is said to be thin element in that case we can choose thin cell element so that uh, it just gives the one value in the element it considered both in plane and out of plane stiffness it, it means uh, the thin cell element has the uh, axial rigidity and uh, bending stiffness so it can resist any out of plane bending but it does not consider the stress in the direction perpendicular to the cell surface. It means transfer shear deformation is ignored in the thin cell element. Um, the thin cell element maintains its equilibrium through bending and axial digit. In most of the case, uh, engineers often choose thin cell element uh, in, in molding of uh, slabs in any type of structure. But we have to understand other type of uh, structure behavior uh, which is available in ETFs or SAP. Another uh, cell element available in ETFs is the thick cell element that is uh, discussed by the Midland theory. Thin cell and thick cell element are defined in both angular and um, planar systems for an angular system a cylinder is considered to be thick if the ratio of the inner diameter to the thickness of the wall is greater than 20 it means d by t should be greater than 20 less than 20 right consider uh, then there is some error Theory. A, a cylinder is considered to be thick if the ratio of the inner diameter to thickness of wall is it should be less than 20 in that case it considers the variation in both whoop stress and radial stress if we apply the internal force on the cylindrical wall then it generates maximum whoop stress in the internal faces and minimum of stress in the external process this the same way the radial maximum radial stress is generated in the internal phase and zero or minimum is at the outer phase but if we apply the load externally then the magnitude will be reverse it means maximum will be at the outer phase and minimum at the inner phase the same principle applies on uh, uh, radial stresses as well. In planar coordinate system, the effective length to thickness ratio is less than 4, then it is considered to be a um, thick cell. It does consider the stress in the direction perpendicular to the cell surface. It means transfer shear deformation is accounted uh, in the thick cell element analysis when the shear deformation is expected to be important we recommend the thick cell element because it will better capture the stress distribution 
this is the case not only for the thicker cell but also for regions near opening and other geometric discontinuities in which the transfer shear deformation develops. Thick cell like thick beams can consider the stress through thickness on the cell in the direction normal to the middle surface and account for the shear deformation. Therefore, we should choose thick, uh, thick cell if we need uh, mostly the shear deformation variations. And stress will be varied if we consider the thick cell or shear deformation, right? The another type of cell element available in the uh, ETFs is the layer cells. Layer cells is, enforces the full composite behavior between the layers because the layer cell is made up of a number of layers of different type of materials. But for each layer, the materi materials remains homogeneous and isotropic. It can take shear, bending and axial load as per the properties of the material used in layer. It may consist of shear, uh, axial rigidity, bending stiffness and shear uh, rigidity. If we take the example for the layer cell, that could be a bearing pad in a bridge deck. For an elastomeric bearing pad, it is made up of uh, steel plate and rubber in an alternate layer. If we need to analyze this type of bearing element in a sap, uh, then we should use um, layer cells. The same uh, principle can be applied on a bridge deck where the deck is made up of high strength concrete but overlay materials provided on the bridge deck is uh, of lower grade concrete or like asphaltic concrete. In that case, if we need to uh, study the stress variation in this combination, then we can choose the layer cell. Uh, thank you guys for your listening. I request you to subscribe my channel because I will update more uh, videos about structural analysis in SAP, ETFs and other structural related content uh, in the upcoming days. So keep on watching. Thank you very much.